August is right around the corner, and as a gamer, what on earth do you have to look forward to? Well, assuming your life is as sad as mine, the only answer to that question is video games. As such, I've compiled the best list of the best games coming out in the best month between July and September, August. What gives me the right to decide what games are the best? Absolutely nothing. But in case you still want to watch for some reason, here they are. As a human being, one of the few things that I need to do in order to simply survive is to eat food. And as someone who eats food, I like when my food is cooked properly. In this situation, however, I think I might be able to accept something that is a little... overcooked. Do! That's right, people. Coming in at number 5 is the sequel to Ghost Town Games' 2016 surprise hit, Overcooked. I don't need to tell you about all the games that this reminds me of. We all played those silly browser games where a food order pops up in the corner and you somehow have to stumble around an inaccurate representation of a kitchen and put a meal together in a way that would get a real-world employee fired while a little timer ticks down uh, because everyone knows that once you pay for your food, you'll definitely walk away if you don't get it in 30 seconds. The one thing in the original Overcooked that let anyone down is it was an absolutely stellar game that still has 91% positive reviews on Steam to this day was in fact the lack of online multiplayer. Some of us are too lazy and reclusive to invite people to our house to play games, and would much rather sit here in our underwear while we play with our friends who are probably sitting in their underwear in their own house. Overcooked 2 delivers on that promise. Thankfully, your characters in game will not be in their underwear, so once you finish this video, you'll never have to think about your friends in their underwear again. On August 7th, casual gamers, people who like sitting around in their underwear, and anyone who likes cute animals and chef hats can rejoice as you sit down to play Overcooked 2. Coming in at number 4, and surprisingly semi-related to cooking as well, I guess, is Guacamelee 2. In 2013, the original Guacamelee was released. It was a Metroidvania-style platformer with engaging combat, an absolutely astounding art style, awesome music, and an unhinged and unbeatable sense of humor that all worked together to keep you hooked from start to finish. Not every indie game is worth the same attention as a AAA title, but this one was, and Guacamelee 2 is looking at least as good. You may think that the original Guacamelee was ridiculous, and if you did, then not only were you correct, but you should expect more of the same from Guacamelee 2. We are being promised a ton more enemy types than the last time around, an advancement of the same art style on a whole brand new engine, and a lot more bosses, and more importantly than any of that, we are promised a solid adventure that will take you to every edge of the Mexiverse. That's right, they call their universe the Mexiverse. If you aren't already sold on this game, I don't really know what to tell you. Oh, except for the fact that there is a secret Mexican chicken cult built to slowly but steadily teach you the art of being some sort of were-chicken. You know, like a, like a werewolf, but with chickens. August 21st is when you can get your hands deep into the next entry into what is probably the greatest guacamole-based wrestling Metroidvania series ever released, Guacamelee 2. Number three is one that I have a slight bit less input on than I'd like to, and that is Telltale's The Walking Dead Season 4, lovingly labeled the final season. I don't have quite as much context on this series as a lot of people, as I have staunchly avoided it ever since the first season broke my heart into about 7,000 pieces and refused to put it back together. the games have had a huge impact on the gaming community at large. It is a massive part of the whole interactive story side of gaming, and on an even more specific level, the, the Walking Dead series has been a large part of this channel for years. This season of The Walking Dead promises to finish off Clementine's story, which has been going on for an unbelievably long time, and just to close off all of the little loose ends of the series, making a nice little tightly wrapped bow of an ending. If you're looking for a well-made story experience that will always keep you at high hopes that a happy ending is just around the corner, just to crush your dreams time after time after time like a pile of nuts shoved into a slap chop, you're gonna love my nuts, then this is the game for you. Season 4 of Telltale's The Walking Dead releases on the 14th of August, so you can be unbelievably sad right in the middle of the month. World of Warcraft. As an internet nerd, I am amazed it took me as long as it did in life to get lost in one of the greatest soul-sucking experiences that gaming has ever had to offer. 
but with Legion, the last expansion to the game, it finally happened to me. Going into it with a few friends, but coming out of it with many more, this game has been a roller coaster for me. From the fantastic story of the world, to the size of the player base, to the quality of the content, to just the feel of being in a game with such an illustrious history as this one has. It is difficult to get into this game without leaving with a host of great memories and experiences, and in fact new friends that you will never forget. Because of this, coming in at number 2 is the next expansion, Battle for Azeroth. This looks back to go to the roots of the game and pit friend against friend as you battle for the supremacy of one of two factions, the Horde, or the, the wrong choice. I mean, Alliance! I guess you can be Alliance if you really want to, but if you are, you're dead to me. Exploring off the coast of the two main continents of Azeroth, we will make new friends and new enemies in our journey for more and more awesome loot and transmogs. If you have played World of Warcraft in the past and did not try it again with Legion, first of all, you made a mistake. It's in a great place right now, and Battle for Azeroth looks to continue that trend, so you should try it again. Give it another chance. If you have never played World of Warcraft before, a new expansion is the perfect time to try it. The one piece of advice I have for new players is to not get discouraged. The game can feel incredibly daunting when you're new, but understanding that you haven't even hit the greatest part of the game until you can reach the level cap is paramount to enjoying World of Warcraft, as with most MMOs. If you can drag friends along with you, then fucking do it. But if you can't, don't be afraid to try and make some new friends on your own. This game is an intensely guilty pleasure for me, as I know every time I boot up the game I should probably be doing something more productive as I fly in circles above the main city. But at the height of an expansion, nothing feels more like a second home to me than the World of Warcraft. Battle for Azeroth will be released on August 14th, at which point you guys probably won't hear from me for the next six months. Coming in at number one is less so a singular game than it is a series, and the updates the series will be having in this month. Surprising no one if you have seen anything on this channel, number one is Monster Hunter. As a combination of both the release of World on PC and Generations Ultimate on the Switch to a Western audience. Both of these games have been available in specific markets for a fair bit of time now, but the main deal is that both of them will be essentially given to an entirely new audience in this month. With PC being essentially an untapped market for Monster Hunter, aside from people who happen to have a gaming PC and a console, the PC release of World has the potential to blow the community wide open once again, with an influx of people who have never seen Monster Hunter, which is an extremely exciting concept. Generations Ultimate will strangely have a similar effect on those who have only entered Monster Hunter with World, as World does not have G-Rank, and is relative to previous titles a little bit low on the content side. The release of Generations Ultimate is a fantastic chance for all of the people like me who have never seen G-Rank before to experience it for the first time in a game with an absolutely massive amount of monsters, weapons, armor, and weapon styles that completely change the way you look at each and every weapon. As for PC, if you are an experienced hunter, this will be an excellent time to drag your friends kicking and screaming into the depths of this wonderful series so that you can get your sadistic kick out of watching them struggle to learn the basic mechanics of the game. How do I know you're going to do this? A few months ago, I was that friend. Oh, it does have legs. Of course it has legs. It's a wyvern. I thought, I didn't know that. I thought it was just a big fish. <laughs> as for new players as a whole, don't be afraid of the whole kicking and screaming thing. I promise that was a joke. Probably. This will be a fantastic opportunity for you to get into this gorgeous series in the same way that I got into it myself. Monster Hunter World is an absolutely stellar starting point to the series, and I don't know if there will ever be a better place to start playing. So if you are even lightly considering it, you should just do it. August is shaping up to be an absolutely fantastic month for the Monster Hunter series. Between the Behemoth update dropping on August 1st for World, the PC release of World on the 9th, and Generations Ultimate itself dropping on August 28th. Alright everybody, I've been Cotton Dinosaur, those were my top games releasing in August of 2018. Like if you liked the video, subscribe, and hit the little notification bell for more. And most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet.